I'm sure you've seen it before. Someone has a massive physical transformation and wants to share what they've learned to help others. But it's not just as simple as slapping together a before and after photo and hitting post. You've tried that and it didn't work because this story needs to be told the right way. Which is why in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to tell your own story to land nutrition clients. And this doesn't matter if you've lost hundreds of pounds or if you've just always valued nutrition and health. The principles are the same. You have a story and it needs to be told and it needs to be told the right way to grow your nutrition coaching business. So let's dive in. Before we start, here's what most coaches are doing wrong. Everything is about them. Their social media is a personal highlight reel. What they eat, all of their own training, their thoughts, just stuff that's repetitive and always about them. It's basically a personal diary and leaving it just at that, it doesn't work. Now there is some value in documenting what you are doing, but only when you frame it out in a certain way, in a way that it's not just for you. This isn't just your online personal diary. Other people, they need to know what's in it for them. That's what's going to motivate people to take action and to hire you. When coaches do this well, it starts to look like this. You start to get these comments and these messages. Are you living in my head? This is exactly what I think. But this is so inspiring. Thanks for sharing. Even a bit more forward, I need this. You have people reaching out because you shared aspects of yourself that reflect exactly where they are. And this may be the most important part of growing your business. And that's because growing your nutrition coaching business is not just about being a good coach. It's about telling the right stories. In the Dr. Mark Method, we call this taking off your coaching hat and putting on your marketing hat. And of course you do need to be a good coach, but that doesn't mean that you'll grow. But when you take people through your own journey, the common struggles and pain points to the success and what life looks like now, they start to believe that they can do it too. So let's talk about that. The first thing I want to talk about is the role model expert. Now people hire nutrition coaches for completely different reasons. But one of the most common reasons is that they see you as the person that can help them, not the person with the most certifications or experience or the person that's the most visually pleasing. You just need to show up as the person that can help them. And this is exactly what new nutrition coaches need to focus on. They need to be what I like to call the role model expert. And this is a term that I picked up from my client, Brittany Chapman. It's essentially the person who has done what others want to do. The role model expert is the person that someone trusts to help them on their journey. But role model experts don't have everything figured out. They're just a few steps ahead of the people that they help. They attract the right people by connecting with others, the struggles, the emotions, what life was like before they started. We've had some students come through the Dr. Mark method that have really used their own story to build their businesses. They are the perfect role model experts and one story that comes to mind is Coach Noah. I remember specifically there was a few times in our program that she would post about her own story and get like 15 applications to work with her. It was completely nuts and that's because she did a really good job of showcasing her own story, connecting with people and showing them what's in it for them. One thing that made this easier was that Coach Noah through our program treated herself like her own client, tracked everything she ate, lost a bunch of weight and literally transformed. Sure results are important but what what Coach Noah did and documented through this process was even more important. What started as a hobby and a way to be vulnerable and share her experience really ended up growing and blowing up her business. She gave the people following her a glimpse of what would happen if they followed right along. And she didn't shy away from telling the tough parts and she really dug in. She asked people, do you ever wonder what would happen if you stayed consistent? Because one day Noah woke up and when she looked at the scale and it read 190 pounds, she literally sobbed. And she cried and cried because she let herself slip into someone that she didn't even recognize. Not just her physical appearance, but mentally, she was losing who she was. And one day enough was enough. She was gonna change that. So she went from 190 pounds to 140 pounds, focusing on becoming a better version of herself each and every day. Do you know how many people feel like that? So many people connected with Noah over this. And here's what she said about telling this side of herself. I realized obviously that you can turn your story into parts of your business. Um, so it's definitely not easy, I would say, because most people are very uncomfortable with having that discussion about themselves and it can feel awkward because it almost seems like you're self-absorbed um, mm -hmm. at times. But I would say as long as you know how to promote your story in an educational standpoint and you're just saying like, this is what I did, um, this is what I was struggling with, this is what I can help you with, then I think that speaks more volumes. Now she builds on this experience and routinely highlights this aspect of her story to promote her business. For example, sharing 20 things that she wished she knew before starting her weight loss journey. What's smart about this is that this type of content puts her right in her client's shoes. And in a world where everyone is over teaching and way too high 
high level, Noah is building trust with her potential clients. Here's why this works so well for Noah and why it will work well for you too. Because there's power in stories and telling your own story is the smartest thing you can do. Stories connect with people emotionally. They take complex things and make them simple. Stories help you stand out as the person that can help solve a problem because you have an experience that's unique to only you. And here's the important part. When you can point out that pain, that struggle, and that common ground, people are gonna automatically assume that you have the solution. By harnessing the power of storytelling and not shying away from conflict or struggle, stories direct people right to your solution. But you may be thinking, as a coach, don't I need to present myself in this way that I have it all figured out? Yes, that's true. You just can't be spilling your heart and hoping clients will come to you. Which brings me to my next point. Let's talk about being the authority. Being vulnerable and telling your story isn't for everyone. Actually, the fear of what others will think scares off a lot of coaches from telling their story at all. But it's not just that. If people are going to look up to you and ultimately pay you for coaching help, don't you need to be the authority? So you may be thinking this, I can't be vulnerable, I need to be the person in charge. Many coaches think this, and instead of focusing on how to best market themselves, they focus on getting more education, more credentials. It's almost like they're building what I like to call a credential graveyard. A bunch of letters after your name and certificates, which can be great for knowledge, but don't really appeal to the person you're trying to serve. And as you probably guessed, this doesn't really work. You can't do things for your peers and other coaches in the space. Here is what you do instead. Tell your stories like way back when, when I was doing this, so you still have the authority. You could position your stories like when I was first getting started, or before I did this, something had happened. The basic premise is that the story is in the distant past, something you overcame and now you wanna share with others. This sets the frame as something that you've overcome and is now in the rearview mirror. Then you can follow it up with more authority, like how long you've been a coach for. For example, but over the last five years coaching others, here's an example. You tell a story about what you learned from blank. And then you follow it up with how many clients you've helped through similar things since then. I used to never be able to maintain a healthy body weight until I started doing these two key things. And these are the same things that I encourage all of my weight loss clients to do. I want you to think about the famous hero's journey for a second. You have the hero, which is the client, and you have the guy who helps the hero manifest their destiny, which is you. One is finding themselves, and one knows the way. In the Harry Potter series, an ordinary boy finds out that he's a wizard, entering a magical world where he ultimately defeats the Dark Lord Voldemort with the help of Dumbledore, the guide fulfilling his destiny. You need to tell your story like it was Harry's, but in a way that makes you seem like Dumbledore. You maintain your authority by telling stories that are in the past, and then strengthen them by talking about how many clients you've helped in the same way. Okay, but you may be thinking, I don't have a personal transformation story. Or I do, but it doesn't really appeal to the person I'm trying to attract, so what do I do? Number three, let's be selective. One of the key aspects to effective storytelling is catering the message to the person listening. This is a concept I learned in the book Story Worthy by Matthew Dix, which is a really helpful book on creating the most effective and best stories. The relevant lesson here is to cherry pick the story for your listener, leaving out details that don't really add to the story, and changing details to make it as effective as as possible. It's a story. Take a seed of the truth and present it in a way that's going to help people. That's how you improve your own story for the people that need to hear it. Which reminds me of my client, Paul. Paul worked as a developer in the tech and startup space for the last 20 years. It was a really stressful environment and he ended up neglecting his health, ultimately to the point of gaining 40 pounds, not sleeping at all, and being diagnosed with fatty liver disease. He ended up quitting his job and leaving the only career he's ever known to focus on his health, becoming a totally different person and reversing his diagnosis. Diagnosis. Powerful story, right? Sure, but not every client that Paul is going to interact with or come across is going to develop fatty liver disease. If anything, that might bring up more questions than it solves. So I encourage Paul to do this. He can still name the disease, but frame it out like it's some big event. The conflict or challenge that ultimately someone will have to deal with. This could be the heart attack or diabetes or the big scare that's coming. Doing this lets Paul's story live as a cautionary tale to other tech workers and developers. Just by shifting the focus and making it more for them. And you might be starting to notice a theme here. Here is the most important thing about telling your story to grow your business. Take everything in your story and make it about them. You need to tell the story in the format of, here's what I've done so I can help you. Do that and you'll be landing clients in no time. Now, one thing that I've never really done is tell my story about how I got into nutrition coaching. So let's do that now. I had a frustrating time in college. I never really fit in. I was doing a degree that I didn't really love and I was just jumping through hoops to get by. This made me feel pretty dumb actually, 
even though I knew I was smart, but I did have a passion. Instead of studying, I spent all my time in the weight room and reading every fitness blog or watching every YouTube video I could get my hands on. I was consumed by all things sports nutrition and physique development. I was getting jacked and I wanted to help others do the same. So in 2005, I signed up for a conference to listen to the brightest minds in nutrition coaching, hoping to get some insight on how to get there. And I saw one of the biggest names in nutrition coaching talking on stage. And at the end of the talk, I had the courage to ask him, how do I become you? And honestly, he gave some fluffy answer about buying the right books and studying for years. It wasn't helpful at all, but here's what I took away from that scenario. I figured I would reverse engineer the entire process, his PhD and 11 years of schooling. I'm here to tell you today that you don't need to do that. I spent an entire decade studying the science of nutrition and building an effective coaching system, getting clients results and making money doing it. I have the blueprint for success. It worked for me. It worked for my clients and all the students I teach. And I'm confident it'll work for you too. Tell your story, but make it for them. With that being said, there's two ways of getting better on this social media thing and telling your story to land paying clients. The fast and effective way is to buy our brand new social media course for nutrition coaches. It's called the five client formula, and you can find it in the first link in the description below. It's on sale to the end of this month or until we sell 20 courses. So act fast and get yours now. Or you can take the less expensive, but longer way and watch the video I've linked up right here, which is how to create social media videos. Check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.